Connor, good to see you, mate. First and foremost, massive congratulations. Just just how special is this? It's an easy question, but we need to hear what you think, mate. Yeah, good to see you as well, mate. Uh, do you know what, mate? It's amazing. It's absolutely incredible, I think. Since from the moment I got the phone call on Saturday, I think it was, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. It's, it's an honour to be here. Honestly, it really, really is because... I think the standard of training and everything is just, it's incredible. It's everything I thought and more. And like I said, I'm, I'm massively honoured to be here. It's amazing for me. Did you think the initial, well, I mean, look, he named his initial squad and you weren't in it. So I guess it must have come as a double surprise when you got that phone call. What were you doing? Where were you? <laughs> it was, I've just been saying there about a little story. I was actually taking me, uh, me little boy around to his friends on our estate. We've got like a bit of a pond in the middle of a, uh, our estate. And I was taking my little boy there. My phone was going off my pocket. And it was one of them where you think, you know, I'll ring, I'll ring them back when I get home because I had the kids. I, it was like that sort of thing. And then I got the phone out and got a text saying, got ourselves kids trying to ring you. And I picked the boys up and I ran back, <laughs> ran back to the house to me, missus. So my little boy missed 10 minutes or whatever it was playing with his friends. So I ran back to the house and said to me, said to my wife that got ourselves kids trying to ring me. So she got all excited. So I obviously rang the number back. And honestly, it was, it was a phone call I'll never ever forget for the rest of my life because it was incredible. I was shaking. And, and like I said, it, it was just an honor to receive her. What did he say to you? Just he asked about the family and, 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 and how the how the break was and if we needed the break and different things and then just mentioned about coming meeting up and that it'd be a pleasure to to, to have me down here and, and, I, and I just said I'm honoured. Listen, it's it's an incredible moment for me, as I said to you then. It's it's something I'll remember for, for the rest of my life, honestly. It was an incredible phone call and like I said, I was, I was shaking but I was just honoured by it. There's a lot of people that have been mentioning your name in these circles, pundits and journalists aside for, for quite a while now. But look, you're twenty seven. And I, and I wonder whether you personally had thought maybe your chance had gone for international football. Yeah, no, I, I always look at it every time an international break comes around. I love watching the England national team. Honestly, I watch every single game that's on the telly. And I know how hard it is to get into this team, get into this this organisation. To get, get to your national team is incredible. And as I said, I, I watch every single game and there's some fantastic centre-backs here and fant fantastic centre-backs who've been before me as well people who come in and, and show what they're about. So it was something with me, all I focused on was working hard for Wolves. And I was, I'm at a fantastic club where I knew if I keep on working hard, some things may come and, and luckily it's here now. So I'll try and embrace it as much as possible, but but enjoy it as well. Can I take you back to when you were 21? You, you were sold by your boyhood club, Liverpool, to, to Huddersfield. And I know that hit you pretty hard. You've spoken about that in the past. To go from there, where you were six years ago, to where you are now for club and for country, that's a pretty extraordinary journey, isn't it? It's amazing. It's amazing. And I think back and I, I look at where, where obviously I was playing before. And like you said, I left Liverpool alone at Sheffield United in League One. And then and then we went to Huddersfield. But it was something where I never thought and I never thought about things too far ahead. I was always focused on the present, on on trying to improve and trying to get better. And I was lucky that a club like Wolves come in for me. It was it was an amazing club to come in for me at the time. And, and I'm honoured to play for them. But to get this call now is, is absolutely incredible. So looking back, it's been a hell of a journey. But it's something where now that I'm here, as I said, I'll, I'll try and embrace it as much as possible and, and help this team as much as possible, whether that be in training or come games. Last one from me for, for a while. I'll try and have another cup with you a bit later on. But but um, you'll have noticed there isn't a recognised left back in this England squad, which has led to me and, and people who know more about football than I do, so thinking that it might be three centre backs he goes with against Iceland. Um, that's a system you know pretty well at Wolves. And I wonder whether that, you know, I wonder whether you're doing the same thinking we are and thinking that, do you know what, maybe the next step, which is your England debut, could be just around the corner. Yeah, it's something where you've always got to be prepared. You've always got to be ready for, for if and when the time comes to, to obviously do that. Listen, it's, it's amazing to be able to go and do that would be absolutely incredible, honestly, to make your debut for, for the national team would be, I, I don't even know what to say, it'd be incredible. So it's about being ready. We don't know what obviously the manager wants to do and how he wants to go forward. I just need to make sure this week I'm, I'm helping the team as much as possible in training to work hard as work as hard as possible. And, and like I said, make sure I'm ready come Saturday to, to see what the manager goes in and see how he does it because that's what I'm here for, to help to help this team and, and like I said, move forward with the team. Top man. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Next, we'll head to John Murray from BBC. Hi, Connor. Well done. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Just just do take us back to to when you left Liverpool and and what you were thinking and and honestly, if someone had said to you then that eventually the day would come that you would get into the England squad, what would you have said? It's it wasn't even spoke about. It wasn't even thought of. I'll be honest with you. I, I grew up and I played in a couple of young ages when I was a kid, but to get to the senior team is absolutely amazing. When I left Liverpool, it wasn't really something that. 
I thought of, obviously playing for the national team, but it was something where I just wanted to play football. That was all I wanted to do. I had a loan spell at Sheffield United, which was incredible for me. It's a fantastic football club. And I just wanted to keep on playing football. And luckily I'd done that at, at, at Huddersfield. And I was lucky enough that a club like Wolves came in for me. So, But in terms of your question about playing for the national team, that's never been thought of. Even, even in the last two years, it's, it's always been a dream because since we got to the Premier League, it's it's something you don't think about going to your national team. It's, honestly, it's not something you think about because you feel like that's the pinnacle of, of any Englishman's career. So now that I'm here, I'll, I'll enjoy it as much as possible. But it must have become more of a, a, a realistic ambition over the course of the last couple of years when you've done well and the team's done well. Yeah, you, you always dream about it. Honestly, you always dream about it. You always think about it. I've, I've watched England since I was a young boy, every tournament, every friendly, every game. I, I tune in for it and I watch every single game because I enjoy watching England. I really do, whether 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 I'm here or not. I just love watching England play. So it's been something I've done over my whole life. But the last two years, it's been a little bit of a dream. And, and as I mentioned before, getting that phone call the other day was, was absolutely incredible for me. And when that call came, once it had sunk in a little bit, who, who were the first people that you rang? What did you say to them? What did they say to you? Well, it was it was obviously my wife. She, she, she heard this, but then I rang my mum and dad straight away and me and my wife were on the call and we actually said to them, we've got a bit of news for you. And I had, I had my arm around my wife and she said, and, and my mum and dad said, oh, Mrs. Amy's not pregnant again, is she? So that's what she thought at the time. <laughs> so I said, no, because I've got three boys already. But uh, no, it's, they, they got upset, my mum and dad, because honestly, I think, I think every single player will tell you as well to, to come here is, is a real special feeling. Did you shed a tear as well then? It was something where, you, listen, it's, it, it's a dream of any, any Englishman to go to, to the national team, I think. And I, I never quite, quite shed a tear. I'm, I'm not really that emotional when it comes to things like that. Amy did and, and my parents did. It was lovely to see, honestly. Thanks, Connor. Cheers, Thanks, mate. Thank John. you. Next, we'll go to Jack Pitbrook from The Athletic. Hi, Connor. You've obviously had great success playing in a back three system at Wolves over the last few years. What's the secret to making that system work well? Uh, I think in terms of having players who want to learn, want to adapt, want to get better, we're very lucky at Wolves that... We've got a group full of people who want to improve and want to get better all the time. And I'm real clever footballers who adapt very, very well. So that's been a massive part of how we've done things the last three years. And listen, we've, we've got fantastic, really clever footballers here in the English, in England set up as well. So no matter what the manager goes with, it's, it's something where we all need to be ready. But I think in terms of playing a three, it's just having players who want to adapt, want to get better and want to improve. And, and like I said, luckily at Wolves, we, we've got a fantastic manager who helps us do that as well. And what, what adaptations do you need to, to make to play in the middle of that back three like you do? What's the key? Yeah, as I mentioned before, I think adapting, knowing who's around you, knowing who's playing around you and, 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 and how players are playing, how they want you to play as well. So I think that's the biggest thing. But most of all, having players who want to learn and want to improve that, that formation. And, and luckily, within this setup as well, we, we've got plenty of them as well. So it's great. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Mike. Next, we'll head to Keanu Ratray, who's... Uh, here on behalf of the Black Collective of Media and Sport. Uh, hey, Connor. I uh, wanted to quickly just take you back to something you said to Jamie Carragher on his podcast a few months ago um, when he asked you about your ambitions to play for the England squad. Do I think about ever really getting into the squad? No, I'm quite realistic of where, I'm, where I am and I just focus on the situation I'm in. So obviously five months later, you make me into the England squad. I want to send a congratulations to you. Um, thinking about your journey, you know, um, starting back from Liverpool and then being to where you are now, what do you think it says about your mental fortitude and drive to want to continue to be better and improve every day and ultimately get this call up to the England squad? Yeah, I think I'd like to look at myself on, on being mentally strong. That's something that I, I'll always like to think I have. It, it was something where I've always just wanted to play football. Honestly, I always look at myself and I just want to play football games. And it's, I've been lucky enough to, to play a lot of games at the clubs I've been at. And it's something where that will never, ever change for me. That's all I want to do, just be involved in football matches. So to get to the point where I am now is incredible because, as I mentioned, to, to get to this point in being the national team is it's something I've dreamed about my whole life. And... You look back on that interview with Carter a few months ago and honestly, I, I've always been realistic. That's something that's that's in my head. That's something that I think about all the time, about being realistic of where I am. And, and now that I'm here, I'm, I'm absolutely honest. So I'll try my best to, to help this team as much as possible. And thinking about Wolves, you know, you guys had an amazing, another great campaign and, and a very uh, good European season. Um, just finishing outside of the European places this year, how close do you think Wolves are to being able to lift silverware next season? 
Yeah, I'll be honest with you, it's not something we think about uh, at a club level in terms of winning silverware. We, we live for the present. Honestly, we, we speak together all the time and the manager speaks all the time about living in the moment and, and making sure we take it a game at a game at a time. And it'd be fantastic. Honestly, it'd be amazing for that football club because Wolves is an incredible place to work. It's an incredible place to be. They've got some, some of the best supports around. So it would be amazing. But it's important that we live for the moment and, and make sure we're improving each and every game to obviously get better and, and improve us every day, every game. Thanks, Keanu. Next, we'll go to Joe Edwards from the Wolverhampton Express and Star. Hi, Connor. How are you doing, mate? You okay? Hello, Joe. You're all right, mate. You're all right, mate. Yeah, I mean, you talk about the lovely playing football, the man you played every minute of um, Premier League for the past two seasons now, perhaps playing for England. I guess, you know, having those experiences, I know you're happy to be there and do whatever job you're required, but you feel you're ready for this opportunity as well now. Yeah, I feel like, as I've just been mentioning in, in the last one there, it's something where I, I say to myself all the time, we say to ourselves all the time, that we live at the moment. I'm here now. It's it's incredible. It's an honour. Honestly, it's it's something I'm going to try and enjoy as much as possible because, as I mentioned, the, the phone call the other day was, was absolutely incredible. But now that me, I want to help. I want to help the team as much as possible, whether that be in training to, to help us or others and organise and speak and, and try and play as, as, as much as I can or whether that comes to be a game as well. So I think where I am and, and what I've done on, what Wolves have done for me over the last few years, what last five years that I've been here, to be honest with you, and I'm very, very lucky because the club have put me in a in an unbelievable position to, to be here today. It's all down to the club and what they've done for me. So that's incredible. But now I'm here, I try and give me best as much as possible. Yeah, and just another quick one. You got which kind of links with players that are in that group? Obviously, you know, it's it's a bit of a new new thing, but you've played against a few of them. I'm guessing you may have been with one or two of the, the youth groups as well. Yeah, it's, uh, and by the way, they've been fantastic with me. It's, it's a very open group who, who have been brilliant. So I, th- I think with a few of the new lads, they'll say the same things here as well. They've been absolutely brilliant with me. But in terms of a few of them, I played with Paddy Payne when I was younger in the 20s and in the youth age groups, Eric Dyer, people like this. And it's something where you come back in and it's like seeing them again, like you only seen them yesterday. So honestly, they've been brilliant with me. It's a real open group and I can't speak more highly of how they've been with me, honestly. Thanks, Joe. And we'll finish this section with um, two quick questions from Rob Dawson. 